All right, so we ended with talking about those hydrocolloid uh, materials, impression materials that we can use. But now we're moving into talking about elastometric materials, okay? And these materials get their name because of their rubber-like qualities. They, uh, when the material completely sets, it is kind of like rubber, like elastic, like a rubber band. Um, so it has the ability to stretch. Now these materials themselves, they, they take a very accurate impression. Um, so we generally use these elastometric materials for our final uh, impression when we're creating an, uh, in, an indirect restorative material like a crown or a bridge. Okay, so here is what it looks like. And you see two different colors because one of the materials is what we call light body and one of the materials is what we call heavy body. So the blue material that you see here is the light body material. And what happens is the doctor will take this material in a syringe and will place it over the tooth. Uh, so they kind of squeeze it out over the tooth that is going to get the crown. As the assistant, you will then take the heavy body material, which is the one that kind of looks purplish, brownish color, and you will load the tray with that hot, that, um, heavy body material. You then pass the tray with the heavy body material to the doctor and they place it over the tooth. And that's why you kind of see this two-toned material. The reason why we put the light bodied material is because it has that um, higher viscosity. It kind of flows a little bit better. So it can go into the crevices of the tooth and you'll be, you're able to kind of see a clear margin around the gingival area so that when the lab tech is creating this crown, they know exactly where the crown needs to sit or how, um, how, how they need to create the margin of the crown so that when you seat it on the tooth, it can fit perfectly. <clears throat> so uh, elastometric materials, they are self-curing, okay? Meaning you don't need to put a light on them, they will just set over time. Uh, and they're supplied as a base or a catalyst. Sometimes they come in a syringe and you just have to put a mixing tip on it and that mixing tip will mix the base and catalyst together for you. Um, other times it comes in tubes and you have to squeeze the tubes out onto like a mixing pad and mix it yourself. So the base, it can be packaged as a paste in a tube or it can be in a cartridge or it can be putty in a jar. The catalyst is the accelerator. So again, if you have base and you don't have catalyst, it's never going to set. Your material is never going to harden. You have to um, add the catalyst to the base in order for that reaction to happen. And again, it can also be packaged as a tube. It can be in a cartridge. Um, or it can be liquid that you add to the base and that causes the reaction to happen. Okay, so light body is one of the types of elastometric materials we use. Um, and it's also referred to as a syringe type or wash type. Again, the light body is usually in a syringe because you have to get really close to the tooth and, um, and release this material onto the tooth to capture all of the crevices, all of the uh, margins that were created through the preparation. Um, so it's easier if it's in a syringe because you can get closer to the tooth. Okay, um, then we have regular or heavy body material and these are not generally um, placed directly on the tooth. They're usually placed in the tray and then you kind of put the tray over the tooth in order to capture the impression material. Um, it's a little bit stiffer or thicker than the light bodied material. Um, and you generally want to capture what the contacts are. So how is the tooth in relationship to the other teeth next to it? Um, it also helps you to capture the height of the other teeth as well, because then the uh, laboratory technician can use that as like a, um, use it as like a template of how high they should make the crown that you're asking them to create. Okay, so here's a basic technique. I have to look back at the video I posted before to see if it kind of showed you this process. If it didn't, then I'll post another one that shows you um, what it looks like when you're working with the doctor to, um, to take a final impression. So the doctor first and foremost has to prepare the tooth. And what that looks like is the doctor using their handpiece in order to shave down all surfaces, including the occlusal or incisal edge of the tooth. 
The light body material is prepared. If it's not already in a syringe, then you have to mix it and place it into the syringe and give it to the doctor. The doctor is then going to take that light bodied material and they're going to squirt it all over the tooth that it has been prepared. Once the doctor has, while I, not once, but while the doctor is placing the light body material on the tooth, you should be loading a tray, usually a quadrant tray, with the heavy bodied material. So by the time the doctor has completely placed the light bodied material over the tooth, you should be handing them the loaded tray so that they can take the impression. When the impression material has finally set, you remove it and then you have to look at it to make sure that you can see all the margins, that there aren't any voids, any air bubbles in your impression, and, uh, and also just to make sure that you can clearly see uh, the tooth that you're working on. You want the tooth that you're working on to be highlighted by that light body material. And that's usually why they come in two different colors so you can uh, differentiate between the two. As with any impression that you take, you have to disinfect it and then place it in a, in a biohazard bag and that gets sent to the lab. So when you take a final impression, you do not have to create a model from it. The elastometric impression material will not shrink over time. Um, so it is okay for you to just place it in a bag and send it to a lab and it will still hold its shape for days and weeks after you've taken that impression. Okay, so here are the curing stages. So the initial set, and this is the first stage, um, and this is when the paste itself starts to stiffen a little bit, but it still can be manipulated. Um, so one thing I would say is that when you um, place the material into the patient's mouth, it's going to be very important for you to tell that patient not to move their jaw around. It's gonna be important for you to tell them to stay still um, because during this initial set stage, if they move their jaw, shift their jaw in any way, it's going to mess up your, uh, your impression. Then we have the final set, and this is the second stage, and this is where you start to see the um, consistency of the material change, and it becomes more elastic, more like rubber. Um, so you have to make sure that by this time, it's already seated in the patient's mouth, right? I always recommend holding your impressions in the mouth until it's completely set, okay? I have seen some assistants who will place it into the patient's mouth and then just walk away and tell the patient, okay, it's gonna take about four minutes. But you don't know what the patient is doing when you walk away. You don't know if the patient is shifting their jaw. You don't know if the patient is trying to lift it with their tongue. And that can be the difference between you having an accurate impression or not. So it's very, to me, it's very important that you hold it in place until it, it reaches that final set stage. Then we have the final cure, and this occurs within one to 24 hours. So even though you take it out and it's completely set, it does continue to set over time. And that's why I'm saying even if we ship it out to the lab tech, it's not going to change shape. It's going to stay in the exact impression state that you um, have placed it in. Okay, so um, they're very, there are a couple of different mixing techniques and I briefly spoke about them before. So uh, if it comes into a paste, we have the paste system, we have the auto mix system, we have a mixing unit system, and then we have a putty system for these elastometric materials. So we're just gonna go through the different types of systems we have here. So the paste system, it, uh, it's pretty much, you have two tubes of paste and you would have to squeeze out equal amounts of each. So again, one is gonna be a base, one is gonna be a catalyst. And you have to make sure you're reading the, um, reading the content, like the, the tube that it comes in because they may look the same, but one is gonna say base and one is gonna say catalyst. So you have to make sure you're taking two different paste, mixing them together, um, and then placing it into uh, the syringe if you're using white body or placing it into the tray if you're using regular or heavy body. Okay, make sure you have enough material for the tray that you're using. I can't stress that enough. If you're using a full arch tray, then that means you're gonna need a, a good amount of material. But in contrast, if you're using a quadrant tray, then you really don't need that much, but just make sure you have enough because once you mix it, you, like we said, you can't go back, right? So if you mix it and put it in the tray and it's not enough, now you've wasted time and you have to start mixing again. But by the time you mix a second batch, your first batch is probably already beginning to set. So try to uh, make sure you eyeball and, and make sure you have enough material to put into your tray. Okay, the auto mix system, um, this 
mixes for you, like the name says. So usually this material comes into a little tube um, and the tube itself has both uh, base and catalyst in it. And then you will attach a tip onto it. And then once you squeeze it out, it kind of looks like a little handgun. And once you kind of squeeze it out, pulling on that trigger, it mixes the base and the catalyst together through the tip. And then it comes out and you can place it into the patient's mouth or you can place it um, into the tray. Uh, this is the most common thing that you're going to see, the most common system that we're going to use. And even us, when we get back and we start doing, uh, you know, practicing our skills again, that we're going to be using the auto mix system. Um, we don't really like to use the paste system too often. And that's only because uh, it just takes a lot of it takes a lot of time, right? You have to make sure you're mixing it correctly. You have to make sure you've mixed the right amount. When you use the auto mix, you just keep pumping until you have enough and then you can stop. Um, so this is gonna be the most common one that you see. Okay, so mixing unit system. Um, we have one of these in the office, but we just don't order any um, solution for it because again, it can be a little bit wasteful. And in this case, you have a full unit that sits onto your countertop and then you just attach whichever material you're using and then you press a button and it automatically dispenses the material for you. So it automatically mixes it. Um, it automatically will, uh, you have to attach your tips onto it, but it will automatically put it into the, into the, um, into your tray for you. But you cannot use this system for your, your um, light body, for example, because we can't bring this to the patient. The system itself is really big. So um, you would, if you use the mixing unit system, you can only use it for your tray, but you won't be able to use it for the light body. So it kind of defeats the purpose because now you're using two systems instead of one. But some of the things that make this easier is that it has a controlled um, dispense. Um, but I will say it, a lot of it gets stuck into the tip. So even though they kind of say it's no excess material, you when you look at it, you'll see how much gets lost in the in the attachment, the tip attachment onto it. Um, infection control is a great benefit of it. So you don't really have to spend time cleaning the guns or disinfecting your cartridges or anything like that because you press the button and it kind of just flows out. Versatility, uh, you can use any type of material. And what I mean by that is there, they have alginate that you can actually buy that can fit into this mixing unit. Um, so then, or you can use it for the elastometric, you can use it for a lot of different types of material. Um, so that kind of makes it a little bit versatile. Okay, and then lastly, we have the putty system. The putty system is like Play-Doh. So you have a, a block of Play-Doh from the base, a block of Play-Doh Play from the um, the catalyst and you just kind of knead them together with your hand as if you're playing with dough um, until it's completely mixed and it has one uniform color. One of the impression videos that I posted for you, you can see the, uh, the person in the video kneading the putty system together and then placing it onto the type of dot in order to take an impression. So again, go back and look at those videos so you can kind of see the different ways that the impressions are taken. So the four types of elastometric impression materials are polysulfide, polyether, silicone, and polysiloxane. Um, so we're just going to talk about these different types. And, and, and I will say this, that the different types <clears throat> sometimes are not as important. Um, for the most part, doctors kind of buy what is economically sound for them, like what they can afford. Um, I will say with my experience with all of these different materials, they all do the same job. So you really are just focusing on what does your doctor like? Because at the end of the day, the results I've seen have been the same. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So some of these concerns with these materials are dimensional stability. So do, is the material going to stay in the same shape? And from what I've seen, usually when we use elastometric materials, as long as you allow it to set in the mouth for the appropriate time, it does not change its shape. Now, if you remove it before it reaches that final set, that's when you kind of uh, fall into some problems. Another thing we think about is deformation. Is it going to resist uh, change 
uh, if the patient is kind of like, uh, if there's different stresses when you remove it from the mouth, right? So if you're trying to take it out the patient's mouth and maybe the patient is kind of giving you some resistance, like moving their head away from you, is that going to cause your impression material to change or deform its shape? Usually that doesn't happen. Um, again, as long as you wait for it to be completely set. And then permanent de uh, deformation is the material going to change and not regain its previous shape. Uh, so those are things that we have to think about. We want materials that are going to always stay in the shape that we've created with the impression. We don't want to take an impression and then look at it later and see that it's changed shape, especially for a final impression, because like we said before, the final impressions are used for those permanent uh, indirect restorations. And those are things that we want to make sure we do them correctly so that they can last the patient for the rest of their lifetime. Okay, so polysulfide impression material has been used in dentistry as a final impression material for many years. It's available in light bodied, regular, and heavy bodied. So again, when we talk about from light to heavy, we're talking about the consistency, the viscosity, how a uh, thin or thick the material is going to be. Um, the polysulfide is in a two-paste system. It has a base and a catalyst. Uh, it has a very strong odor and it can stain your clothes. So you have to make sure you have on your PPE. I would even say to make sure you have on like a lab jacket, not just like your, your short sleeve scrubs because you just don't want it to fall onto your skin either. Um, and then it, uh, it has a relatively long working time and setting time. So that means you have a long time that you can mix it. Usually you can mix it for a few minutes, but then when you place it into the patient's mouth, you also have to wait a long time. And as we know, patients don't want anything in their mouth for a long time. So we like to use things that are going to set rather quickly. And then stiffness is low. It's not, it's not very hard. It's, it's more like rubber. It's not a very hard substance when, it's, when it sets. So to use this material, dispense the paste on the mixing pad. You mix them together until you see a uniform color, until it's all mixed together completely. Um, and then you place that onto a fresh surface and um, you remove any excess. Uh, and then you place it into whichever tray it is that you're using. Now it says your water, saliva, and blood can affect this material, but it can affect all of the elastometric materials. So you'll see before the doctor places the impression material, they dry it off really well. They rinse and dry. One of the reasons you have to be careful is because when we place that cord around the tooth, that cord can cause bleeding. Um, so you have to make sure you rinse and dry the area very well before you take an impression material, before you take an impression on that tooth. Okay, it should be removed quickly after a uh, setting you don't want to rock it back and forth, right? So you, you'll you see in the video when um, when the they were taking the alginate, how the assistant took her finger and slid it underneath the uh, tray and kind of locked it out. And that kind of released it, released that suction ability of it. You want to do the same thing with these impressions because if you don't do that, then your only option is to rock the tray back and forth and that can cause it to tear. Uh, the patient's teeth can tear it if you're rocking it back and forth. Um, if you use adhesive, you only want to use a very thin layer and then make sure that the adhesive dries before you place the material. You wait 20 to 30 minutes before pouring the impression. Um, but usually with these types of impressions, we don't pour them, we send them to the lab. Only if your office does in-house lab services, so like they create crowns in the office, they create permanent crowns, I should say, or create permanent bridges in the office, then as the assistant, you pour it. But usually if you're asking the lab to create these things for you, you do not have to pour them. You can just send it um, to, uh, after you disinfect it, of course, you can just send it out to the lab. So next, <clears throat> we have polyether impression material. So it provides better mechanical properties um, because of the, the material itself can hold shape a little bit better than the polysulfide. Um, the material sets stiffer, it's a lot stiffer than the polysulfide material. <clears throat> um, and usually it's because it has like a thinner, a material that it acts as a thinner in it. 
Um, and that kind of reduces the thickness, which gives you a more accurate impression, but also is able to keep the shape as well. Again, this can be supplied as a two-paste system. Tubes are not the same size, but equal length must be dispensed. And what that means is you'll pull out the base and you'll see the base is very, very thick. And then you'll squeeze out the catalyst and you'll see the catalyst is thin. Now, for example, if I squeeze out the base and I squeeze out one inch of the base, I'm gonna also squeeze out one inch of the catalyst, even though they're not the same thickness. We're worried about the size, not the thickness of the base, and then you mix them together, okay? So you have to make sure you have equal amounts before you start mixing. So guidelines is very stiff, which makes it difficult to remove without rocking. So it's going to be very important for you to break that seal before you start taking it out. Again, just sliding your finger underneath the tray to kind of pop it up before you take it out the patient's mouth. Same thing, water and saliva and blood can affect it. So making sure the area is clear before you take the impression. Um, increased water absorption occurs because of the thinning agent. So at the end, once you disinfect it with the disinfectant solution, you want to kind of shake some of that water, um, shake some of that solution off before you send it out to the lab. Silicone impression materials are odor-free, non-staining, and relatively easy to use. Um, silicone is is very close to what can we compare it to, like. I don't know, something in between like gelatin and plastic. Uh, so it's, it kind of holds up a little bit better. It's probably one of the most stable ones out of all the other options we have here. <clears throat> it has like the, the uh, it's less likely to deform after you've taken the impression. So it's, and it's usually kind of, I would say the ones that are most expensive because it kind of gives you all of the properties that you're looking for in one. It doesn't smell. You don't have to worry about it staining the patient's clothes. Um, it's easy to mix. It's going to withstand any deformation when you take it out the patient's mouth. So things like that, um, especially when you find a product like that, you'll notice that those are the products that cost uh, the most. Um, again, it can be supplied as a base and a catalyst. A uh, base is going to be the paste, and the catalyst is usually a little liquid where you drop some onto the base and kind of mix it together, or it can come in a cartridge. Okay, so the material has a limited shelf life, so that means you, once you order it, you don't have much time to use it. Now, that it will last you a couple months, yes, but most of these materials that we use, you can have them for about a year or so before they expire. Um, so this is not something you want to buy in bulk, because if you order it in bulk and you don't get to use it, now you have to throw this material away. And like I said before, it's, it's not cheap. Um, you, it has its own tray adhesive. So usually when you order it, it comes with the adhesive. Um, it's not subject to scenarysis or imbibition, so meaning it won't shrink and it will not expand. Okay, the material is more flexible, so it's like less likely that it's going to distort. And if you're going to pour it yourself, you have to wait about 20 to 30 minutes just for the material to kind of set in place. Okay, then we have lastly the polysiloxane impression material. So high dimensional stability, low tear resistance, easy to handle. Okay, and that's what we look for, no taste or no odor, and it has, it comes in light, regular, and heavy body form. Okay, so this is the best impression material for um, <clears throat> dimensional stability, meaning after you take the impression, you know that it's not going to change shape. So as you can see, as we go through these different materials, they pretty much are all doing the same thing. And that's why I said in the beginning, it's pretty much about you choose, the doctor choosing the one that they can afford, first and foremost, and then the one that they like to use the best. Some of them come in different viscosity. Some of them are thicker or thinner when you use them or easier to pump or, or harder to pump. It's more about what the office prefers to use. Because as we go through these guidelines, and how to use them, what you should be noticing is that the material is all the same, okay? So when you're using this polysiloxane, uh, you, can, you can wait a long time before pouring it because nothing is going to happen. It's not going to distort. So like that's why it says here, it can be delayed seven to 10 days. Um, stiffness of the material makes it a little bit difficult, just like the last one we spoke about. So again, you gotta release the suction 
and then you kind of rock it out. So you don't want to be pulling on the impression tray in order to remove this. This material can be used in an auto mixer with the mixing tips. Okay, uh, last thing we have to talk about is our occlusal registration, our bite registrations. So this is, uh, if you remember in the beginning of this chapter, we spoke about these bite registrations are used for us to be able to tell how high the patient's bite is. So how, how will their mandibular and maxillary teeth connect, right? When the patient bites down on their centric occlusion, so biting down on their back teeth normally, where do their teeth hit? Where do their, their teeth connect? Um, and this is important so that we don't create crowns and bridges that are too high or too low. Okay, here's an example of bite registration uh, with a ZOE material. And as you can see, all, of your, all you are capturing are the occlusal surfaces of these teeth. And if I was to flip this material around, you would see the occlusals of the opposite arch. That's all we want to see because now I can place this on a model and I will be able to tell exactly how high or how low the crown or bridge I'm creating needs to be. Okay, you can use a wax if you don't want to use the ZOE uh, material. And all we do is we take a little piece of flexible wax, put it into the patient's mouth, and we have them bite down um, until they feel their teeth connect. So you can't, of course, you have to make sure the wax is not too hard. You have to use flexible or softened wax. Okay, and here's what it looks like. So you have a piece of wax, you put it into the patient's mouth and have them bite down as hard as they can. And then you can see the indentation of their occlusal. Um, and then you use that to help map out, you know, what the um, height of the crowns can be. Next, we have polysiloxane bite registration. So it's one of the most popular ones. It comes as a paste system. It sets really quickly. So that's one of the things that I'm going to tell you guys when we practice it is we're going to start off when we take bite registrations. We're not going to use the regular bite registration material because it sets so quickly and it doesn't give you enough time to practice. And of course, the first couple of times you do it, it's going to be practice. So we'll use a different material just to get you guys used to the motion of placing this material on the patient's teeth. It sets in under a minute. Once you mix the base and catalyst together in that syringe, it's going to set so quick that, um, you know, it's very easy for you to kind of make a mistake. So, so just so we don't waste it, we'll use a material that sets at a little slower pace before we kind of advance to using this polysiloxane material. Um, it's no odor or taste for the patient. It gains stability over time. So after a while, you'll see the material get harder and harder, even after you've removed it from the patient's mouth. Okay, the ZOE bite registration material, uh, it's more durable for your bite registration. The paste has little resistance. I will say uh, we don't really like to use this because of the eugenol. If you remember, eugenol is the oil of cloves, and uh, that's not a really good uh, taste or smell for the patient. So we prefer to use other ones. But in, in, if you take that out of it, it's a very strong, durable material. Um, you do have to mix it and then place it uh, onto the patient, onto a little gauze for the patient to bite into. So it can be a little bit messy as well. Okay, so again, um, I'm going to post this as a discussion. That's why I didn't really ask any questions on here and I just kind of flew through it. I'm going to post this as a discussion onto the Google Classroom um, and that's where I'll be. You'll be posting any questions you have and I'll be responding to them through that. All right, thank you guys.